Guys, when you're talking 357 Magnum, I highly recommend a 3-inch barrel if it's something you're actually going to want to carry. 3 inches, is the beautiful. It's balanced really, really well. Yes, this firearm's clear. Look at that 7-shot cylinder. Very strong lockup. You want a 3-inch barrel because it balances nicely. It's the perfect balance. Now, most of these out there are 4.2 inches. It's a little long for carry. Or they're the 2.5 inch version. This Talo exclusive is 3 inch barrel, 7 shot. So, pretty rare here. And uh, definitely the fiber optic front is a huge preference over their black uh, blade post. I love the looks of the unfluted cylinder. But 3 inch barrel, guys, going back to that, it's going to balance really 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 nice and more importantly it gives you the ballistics just about probably like six percent eight percent less of full power 357 magnum from a four inch barrel but it gives you a big huge step up from a two inch barrel 357 magnums and two inch barrel ain't so great two and a half is kind of okay but three inches is going to give you a lot more ballistics uh advantage that way, whether it's a mild, modern hollow point, it's going to do a really, really good job. And if you're using old school, which I think I'm going to go old school, federal 125 grain and 158 grain semi-jacketed hollow points here, you're going to still get great velocity and perhaps even better performance than the 4-inch. So get a little less expansion. It's, it's the right balance between getting the expansion and the penetration uh, you need with a lot of the cheaper ammo. So there's a lot of reasons why the 3 inch also it's going to be better for retention than being able to have a 4 inch or 4.2 inch barrel grabbed. 125 at 1450. That's screaming stuff which matches the original badass loadings from Federal. Be the test ammo. So actually not a bad group. For me I'm obviously not a great shot but that's a fist group. I'm not Paul Harrell. 10 yards though, 38 special plus P. Just over, just over a fist group. Not bad. The results of that are I went for the same target on accident, kinda, and uh, well, I still got my fist grouping 10 rounds. All right, let's see what the recoil is like. Fioki 158 grain, rated at 1,220 feet per second. This is pretty hot stuff. All right, let's bring it in and see how we did. Woo! Magnum for us. I said, woo! Um, the 357's always been known as a good stopper. I think there's a lot of reasons for that. I think overall, ballistically, Getting into tissue crush, you look at something like a 45 HST, nothing is going to beat that. Nothing. No other caliber is going to beat the amount of tissue damage. 10 millimeter comes close because it penetrates farther, but doesn't expand as, expand as much. But really, old 45 um, really, really does it. I think 357 did it and did it for other reasons because in overall, pistols suck as stoppers. The biggest reason there is a stop is a psychological stop. Well, what are the reasons you're going to get a psychological stop? It's going to be because of the loud bang and flash. Hello, 357 Magnum. Number one. Number two, my theory um, is that any kind of testing that you see, whether it's clear gel, mostly real ballistics, whether it's ballistics with board in front, like FBI protocol, pine board, especially if you put bones in front, meat targets, Paul Harrell, etc. Um, Yo, homie, is that my briefcase? On the back. Nice start. There's one more guy. 